we have spent almost three weeks looking at the examples of Laplace transforms, trying to understand the properties. And now this is time for culmination. We're going to apply Laplace transform to a rather complex example of an RLC circuit, an electric RLC circuit. Let's look at the circuit. So we have a resistance, inductance, capacitance, some voltage applied across the circuit to generate an electric current. And for specific values of these proper material parameters for the uh, circuit, and assuming there was no charge on the capacitance and no current in the circuit before we started to observe it, we're going to switch on the voltage, but only keep it switched on for a fixed period of time, say for two seconds. And that is the key difference here. So we have switched on the voltage, keep it constant and switch it off. So to describe that, we need to use a causal-like function. In this case, we have a constant function, which is modulated by this two unistep functions. So we have a voltage which appeared at time zero and then disappeared after time. So this was time zero, this is time two. And this was the voltage which was equal to 30 volts but only between these two time periods. So the question is, can we model and predict how the current, electric current, behaved in the circuit? So this is an example of a dynamical system. And we know how to model it because we have an equation. So that's an integral differential equation with the jumps on the right-hand side. So the right-hand side here has jumps. So it switched on, switched off. And how to solve it? Well, let's use Laplace transform. Step one, apply Laplace transform to the left-hand side and right-hand side. Left-hand side gives us these three terms first, second, third. Remember, then you apply the plus transform to the integral, you divide your unknown function, Laplace transform of unknown function, then you apply it to derivative, you multiply it by the s, and also there is some constant. And the right-hand side, according to the table, we get 30 over s, and then you have a shifted uh, unistep function, u multiplied by the exponential. And because we didn't have any electric current in the circuit, we get rid of the constant, and we can simplify to get just one bracket times the unknown Laplace transform and the right-hand side. And if we multiply the whole thing by s, we get that expression. Right, so we completed part one, step one, and now the step two is to express i as a function of s, i bar as a function of s. And we do it, so we complete step two, we express it and uh, this looks not something we can see in the table. So what we can do here? So step three is to find inverse Laplace transform of that function. 
So first we complete the square and that gives us two fractions rather than one because we had, if you remember in the previous step, we had numerator involving one minus exponential. So that's why it's two fractions. And that's not a simple fractions. So we need to use an inverse time delay theorem like we did with an example for an OD, for a simpler OD, ordinary differential equation. So because the second term involves that exponential in the numerator, we need to use inverse time delay theorem. How to do it? Well, we first just take the function, multiply it by the unit step function, and use the tables. And if we do that, we get this result. And if we compare that to the previous case where we didn't switch off our voltage, then it just died out, the current, so it's a, there was an initial spike which died out. So that was the solution to the case where we just the voltage turned on and stayed on. Now let's compare it to the solution which we just found where the current generated by the voltage which was switched on and then switched off. At time equals 2. And there you can see that at time equals 2 something interesting happens. Instead of dying off, it starts to increase again. And the reason is because the charge which was accumulated at the capacitor started to flow back. And then we ultimately reach a new steady state, which is zero current, but only after the capacitor discharged, because we removed the voltage. So that was a very non-trivial example of an integral differential equation with the jumps generated by this voltage, and the Laplace transform allowed a rather straightforward way to solve it, which will be very difficult to achieve by other means. So that was the end of the first section of this course unit called Laplace transform, and later we move on to a new part called Vector Calculus.